2050, the world population will reach more than 10 billion people, according to FEO. Urbanization will continue to grow rapidly, increasing income per individual, and will change the food requirements and preference. In order to meet, to meet this growing and demanding request, uh, we must increase the food production. What are the main challenges for the sustainable production? Yeah, one of the um, major issues that we're going to deal with is the amount, of course, as we have growing population, there's going to be issues you're going to deal with. One is going to be the amount of arable land. As you have more people in the world, you, we may see the trend towards urbanization. So we need, and with urbanization, you have the loss of arable land, which means for food production, we have to produce more food with less land. So it's going to be very effective that we have innovative tools that allows us from a seed perspective, from a crop protection solution perspective, from biologicals, and from also digital to be able to provide unique solutions to the farmers to increase their yields, but at the same time to improve quality and taste, especially with fruits and vegetables. Another issue we're going to need to manage is water. Water is a very important element in agricultural production, but water is also a necessity that every human being in the planet needs. So we're going to have to find new ways to produce high quality food with less water. So these are the key elements that we'll need to manage as we move forward. I also would say that new types of agricultural production will be really key. Not only open field production, but under glass house and fruits and vegetables and new technologies such as vertical farming will be key. Think about high rises with vertical farms on top of the roofs to produce food. So there's many things that we will need to manage and use enabling technologies to help us be able to feed the world's population. Uh, and think, um, think about the research. Uh, we saw the Brazil like a big player because we have a fertile soil, water resource. But uh, how does a buyer think about Brazil in this partnership? Brazil for us is a significant country. It is the second largest soy producer in the world. And as you stated well, it's a culture where, of course, meat is important, but also fruits and vegetables are becoming ever more important with trends. So for us, we see through our food change partnerships and with all the relationships that we have as growers that Brazil is important today and will be even more important in the future. And you think Brazil are ready to... to to this challenge? Yes. Everything that I see when I look from the perspectives of what we're doing with working with our growers, Brazil is a market that is evolving so that you have actually your overall growers are looking for those enabling technologies. You're building up your infrastructure to support the growth. So for me, it's a country that will be ready. I think it's like all countries. As we talk about growing population, we're going to have to enable from an infrastructure perspective, from an innovation and utilizing these enabling technologies and it'll evolve with time. But everything that I can see um, from Brazil, they're ready and they're moving with all of these trends. Yes. Uh, thank you for your participation. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a, a, a big event, uh, important for the farmers to increase their production with sustainable research. Yes, absolutely. Fruit Logistica is one example where we're bringing people across the world that have a passion for agriculture and they want to allow it, it to bring together all the right partners across the value chain to find sustainable solutions for food production. So it's an excellent opportunity for those that are here. And Nadia, thank you for your time uh, in interviewing me. I really appreciate it.